Hey guys, today I want to talk about using mod maps in Alchemy and I already did one video about mod maps. Um, if you haven't seen that one, check it out first and do a search for it because this is going to take that whole idea a step further and it might be pretty complicated, definitely if you're new to Alchemy. All right, that being said, uh, what we see right here is a preset that I created and um, the first thing I do normally when I when I finish a sound is I will set up these performance controls. Now performance controls are like macros or they are macros actually. Um, they're just empty controls that we can assign to other parameters to control them. So for example, if I right click my cutoff here, I can assign performance control one and I can assign that to filter two as well. So now using the same knob, we can control both of these cutoffs. That's pretty nice already. Now Alchemy takes this one step further and it actually allows you to um, save a, a snapshot of these performance controls. And we do that with this morph pad right here. So basically you can set up all these controls differently and then, and then move towards that position. So you can see if I scan around here, we get different positions for all of the macros. So not only are those macros um, assigned to multiple sources, then we can actually move multiple macros at the same time, which is probably my very most favorite feature of Alchemy. Um, the way you do that is you just make a change and then you right click here and you say store current snapshot and now it stores that in that position. All right. Um, so now that we know that, let's listen through, to, through <laughs> to some of the variations that I've made here. Um, so that gives you an incredible amount of flexibility like there's so much what you can do with that now today I specifically want to talk about this knob that I created called shapes and this knob allows you to select multiple different um, MSEGs and basically what it's doing is we have a filter right here this bandpass filter in our main effects section if I click that um, or if I click the cutoff on that filter we can see that the cutoff is being controlled by um, multiple MSEGs and a sequencer and the depth of those MSEGs is then being controlled by something else which is that performance control 7. Now um, this is going to be way too way too complicated to explain in, in this project. Um, I'll just I'll just give you an idea for the sound and then we'll move to a new alchemy preset so that you can actually see how, how that's done. So um, basically here if I have my shapes um, in this very first position, it's gonna play back the, um, I should put it here. So in this very first position, it's gonna, it's gonna raise the amount of which MSEG2 is modulating the cutoff. So it's gonna set this control right here. It's gonna set the depth. Um, once again, hang on for a second. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better. Um, just for now, this is what it sounds like. So right now we're hearing MSEG2, then um, after that if the knob is at about 20-22% we're going to hear MSEG4 which is this one. Um, so we can go through various rhythms there and then if I um, take it up to about 50%, we're gonna hear MSG5, which is this guy. And then all the way at the end, we're gonna hear sequencer two, which is this. So we can basically um, select different modulators to control that cutoff. I then did additional things like also being able to control the mod depth and um, the filter type. So you get an incredible amount of variations there um, with these, well, actually these four knobs with the cutoff, the modulation depth, which is the same for all the sources. So I can, I can change the, um, 
the amount of modulation and then I can choose, this is sort of like a switch, I can choose different modulators and I can choose which filter I want that. Um, so it's like it's super powerful, I'm actually a little bit proud of it. Um, so then what I wanted to do was I actually want to show this in a new in a new patch so it's going to be a lot easier to see what's going on and I'll take that same uh, melody there just going to open a new alchemy and make sure that that's not too loud All right so um Let's go. We, let's take one source, um, a saw is fine for now, and let's route it through the filter. By default, this is already happening. You can see that it's being routed to filter one, which is this guy right here. So I'm going to click the cutoff on that filter, which, um, which, shows me, which will show me like the modulation page for that. So every knob that you click, the, this page here will, will update to, to show which things are assigned to that cutoff. Another very handy one here is show target, where you can see which modulators are assigned to which target. So um, after I click that cutoff, I can assign some different modulators to that. So let's go for sequencer one, sequencer two, and sequencer three, and why not sequencer four. All right, so now all of these sequencers, which look identical, um, because we haven't changed them yet, they will all control that low pass cutoff at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. Um, so the first thing what we want to do is we want to reset all this so that all the modulation depths are to zero. And now this sequencer has no control or no effect on the filter uh, whatsoever. So if I play, you can, you actually don't hear anything because it's being low passed. All right, so next step is to create um, some variations here. So I'm gonna, to save some time, just make them a little bit shorter. I'll set the value snap to eight maybe, which means that we have eight different values. If you wanna use this on the pitch, you would set it to 12, for example, to always jump to um, full semitones. All right, so that's filter, uh, sorry, it's MS sequencer one, then Sequencer two, and let's maybe give that a different speed as well. And then we have three, let's maybe go for a preset. There we go, that saved some time. Um, and let's go for another every four. All right, so we created four different um, MSEGs, sorry, sequencers. I don't, I normally use MSEGs, so that's why I get confused here. Um, I'm gonna give some of them a different uh, rate, so it's just the speed, this one is eight notes, uh, this one is 16. Let's go for one um, dot at 16. All right, so now we've created these four different sort of rhythms. We can do that with any modulator we want. Um, we can also use these MSEGs. Um, sequencers are just fast. So now what I want to do is I want to control the depth of this modulation assignment with my performance control one. So I'm gonna do that for all of the different, different sequencer depths. So the depth is just the amount of control that the sequencer has over the cutoff. So that's why this is sort of in the middle. So the signal flow is, um, sequencer signal and then you set the the loudness or depth or the volume uh, depends on what you want to call it of that of that sequencer um, which is being applied to the cutoff so for example if i give this a range of 50 percent the, the cutoff will only open halfway all right you, you guys know this stuff so i'm gonna um, add performance control one to all of these like that So now, when I um, when I set this control, it will it will start modulating the cutoff with all the sequencers at once, which might sound cool, might also sound pretty messy. Uh, let's listen to that. All 
yeah, it's, it's basically a mess because it's now adding up all of these amounts here together to control the cutoff. Um, doesn't sound that good. All right, so um, what we want to do is this is where the mod maps come in. So I'm just going to set the volume a little bit higher. So the mod maps go in between these assignments. If I right click here on this depth control, which is being modulated by performance control one, I can edit the modulation and I go one layer deeper into the, into the modulation assignment. And now we can actually see that control one. Um, the reason for that is that if you're clicking something like a knob in this top section, um, it can show you like the, the things being that, that are controlling that specific knob that you click. But um, of course, if you have a knob in the modulation section itself, you cannot see that because this is already used to show that cutoff. So that's why we have to right click these knobs and then we say edit and then we go one layer deeper. So there we can actually see that control one controlling, um, controlling the, the, the sequencer depth. All right, so I'm gonna um, assign a new mod map in between here, which is what we do in that little slot, and then you can choose the number of the mod map that you want. Now there's a convenient preset here, which is called four-way switch. If I go with the first one of the four-way switch, you can see that it's only enabled at the very first part of this um, control, which means that if I set my um, performance control right here, somewhere in this in this first section then it's gonna it's gonna raise the amount of sequencer one controlling the cutoff um, after that it's not doing anything anymore so to show that if i switch these off all right so um, we can hear that sequencer one is controlling that if i and you can also see that now here it says 100 percent, even though the knob itself is only at 25 percent. if i raise this a little bit further um, we're not hearing anything anymore and we can see by that little small dot on the Lopez filter the cutoff is all the way down So it's not being controlled anymore and that's because th this mod map it scales this knob It sort of maps this this knob to the other knob, which is exactly the same as um, what logic does with the um, With the smart controls map, so if I have something right here, we also have a have a map function um, which is this which is this map right here um, so you can see that a normal map is always from from the left to the right always goes um, up like that with alchemy that's the same thing so a normal mod map if I make a new one um, let's just for the sake of example um, instead of one let's use new mod map you can see that our, like by default it comes up like this and this is just the normal behavior so when i have my um, performance control one controlling the cutoff um, like from the left on the left side it's sort of the left side of this control which has this value of zero all the way on the right is all the way on the right side of that control as well which has a, zero, um, a value of maximum so you can actually see that it's twenty thousand hertz right there um, that means that if I do something like this, this knob will have no effect at all because now, no matter where where this knob is positioned, it will always be 100% because of that mod map. Um, so that's that's what they do in the basic sense. So um, what this means for us in this example is that we can create switches. So if I just go back to using mod map one, um, that's why we only hear that sequencer at the first half here. So now what I want to do is I want to enable sequencer 2 when the knob is um, past that point. So I'm going to edit that modulation as well and I'm going to choose mod map 2 and then I'm going to choose switch 2 as well. So that's for that section, all right? I hope this is starting to make sense. Then I'm going to do the same thing for sequencer 3, edit modulation and now another mod map which is going to be switch 3 and then finally sequencer 4 edit modulation new mod map four so now um, this should work and it should um, switch between those four different sequencers so sequencer one and then we get to sequencer two which i'll make a bit faster and then we get to sequencer three
finally sequence four. So now all of them, because we have the, we're using those sort of straight line mod maps, we don't have modulation depth. This is just a switch, so it doesn't control the amount of modulation. It's either on or off. If we want to do that, if we want to be able to scale this range again, and here's something where Alchemy truly excels over other synthesizers, is that we can now go into that modulation depth assignment. So we're already like one layer deeper. And then again, we can modulate that depth with another control. So now you have a control controlling a control through a control, literally, uh, which is like pretty insane. So um, what I can do is I can assign control two to control the depth of that modulation again. I'm going to do that for all sources. Um, and I'll right click that. I'll, I'll go a little bit slower. So what happens is first layer, we have sequencer three here. Um, if I right click on the modulation depth, I can edit that modulation. So I go one layer deeper. I can see control one modulating um, the amount of, um, of that sequencer free, which is being scaled through a mod map. And then I double click to reset the depth control on that. And then I add modulation to that depth control control as well, which is going to be control two. So that's going to be how we're, how we're going to scale our modulation. So uh, once again, edit modulation. We reset that control and we add new modulation, which is performance control two. Right? This can be a real messy for your brain, um, but just mess around with it and, and you'll figure it out. All right. So here we have our modulation depth. Let's call it something like that as well. Mod depth, and then we have um, sequencer chooser. So now first we can choose a sequencer. Let's go for sequencer one. And then we need to set the depth. All right, now in the other patch, I, did, I added one extra thing to that. Um, which was a control which um, switches filters in a similar manner. Now, what I like to do is in, instead of using this um, filter here, I normally um, use filters on the um, channels here because in the effects, or sorry, in the effects, because there the filter has a mix control. Um, where is that guy? Multimoid filter. So this has all the same filter types, but it has this extra mix control, which is pre pretty nice. Um, so I normally like to use those. For now, though, I'll use these two filters. So let's um, let's go between like um, low pass and band pass. Just make it simple. Um, so what I can do then is I can just do that same thing. I, I would do exactly the same approach for that second filter with exactly the same knobs as well. And I'll fast forward this for you guys. a bit of an annoying task but now I've um, set up exactly the same thing as I did with filter one but now for this bandpass filter right here um, so now the only thing left what we need to do is we can set up a third performance control to uh, switch between the two and we don't even need a mod map for this um, we can just say filter a and B um, so with this, we just change this mix control to send to either this filter or this filter.
Right, um, so that's the idea. I hope that makes sense. You can make like super cool bass sounds and, and modulation with that. Um, if I use these link controls, it will um, it will actually link these steps so it becomes less clicky, which can um, sound really nice. Then you can smooth out the modulation a little bit, which generally is a nice idea for these sequencers. And then we can get those sort of pretty advanced wobbly kind of things going on. And now, of course, using these pads, um, we could do. The, um, we could actually change all of these knobs at once. So we could save this position right here, and then for snapshot two, we can actually go to a band pass with a different sequencer and different different mod depth, something like that. All right, um, that's all I had to show for today. I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, just you can um, ask questions in the comment section. I will try to explain it um, a little bit more. Uh, have fun with that, guys, and I'll see you in another video. The Pyramind Mentorship Network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production, sound design, music business, and more. Use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want, pick your mentor, find a day and time that works best for you, then book your session. Your appointment will be confirmed instantly. Study only what you want, progress at your own pace, pay as you go, and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio. Our global network of industry experts are here to help you. Visit pyramind.com mentorship to get started.